In a sample decision, I'm going to use cards to help explain what this is really all about. Okay, can I get somebody to volunteer? Anybody? One person, okay. Let's go with you. First step, and then you're gonna hand cards over, but the first step, select two aces and two jokers. There are only two jokers in the deck. Flip it over, find them. And then any two aces. <coughs> All right, I'll take the leftovers. And if you could hand those four cards to anybody if you're choosing. Okay, John, would you shuffle up those four cards? Well, make sure you have two aces and two jokers. Yeah, don't, don't need to be blindfolded. You got, you got two aces and two jokers? Yeah. Okay, shuffle them up. Hand them to somebody else to shuffle up. These are leftovers. Uh, oh, yeah. All right, they shuffled. Okay, put them down, face down on the desk. Now, if somebody wasn't sitting right next to you and didn't see what they, they were, help, could you help out? No, I'm doing it. Just pick two cards. Any two. Pick two? Yep. Pick two. And don't look at them. Put those two cards face down. Just leave them face down. And I'll take those two. Not looking at them. Okay, next slide. So we're gonna play a game. And the question is, would you play this game? No money's trading hands. Theoretically, if you had to pay $30 for the opportunity to possibly get 60, possibly get your 30 back, another way you get 30 back, or possibly owe an additional 18. <laughs> Would you play the game? Yes? Well, the odds are in, would be in my favor that I would make money from the, uh, uh, the, the game playing, although it, it would be a risk of uh, That's correct. There is a possibility you can make a lot of money, double your money. And there's a possibility that nothing happens. You get your money back. And there's this little possibility that you pay more. Anybody else have a theory? Would you play the game? Why not? You're on the right track. Yeah, also, yeah, we couldn't hear her. Okay. She's saying that you have a one in four chance of getting money, two in four chances of nothing, 
and one chance of actually losing more money. It's not exactly the right answer, but it's very close. Next slide. What's the, I, I don't know what answer you're talking about. Would you play the game? She said no. She said no. Okay, what's really happening here is we have a first decision. Do I want to play the game or not? And if the answer is yes, then we actually have a lot of decisions. If the answer is no and you just walk away, there's no more decision to make. You're not playing the game. So if you do play the game, you have a chance of the four cards to either pick an ace or a joker on the first try, the first card. And if you pick an ace, there are only three cards left. So it's not exactly a one in four. You only have three cards left. There's a possibility, before you look at the card, there's a possibility that there's an ace left. In which case, it's a one in three. That means the card you picked, haven't looked at yet, is an ace. There's a one in three chance the next card you pick will be an ace. No peeking. <laughs> okay. There's another option here. If you picked an ace as your first card, that the remaining two cards would be a joker. And if you look at the percentages of those happening, there's certainly a bigger chance that it's a joker than an ace. Similarly, if you pick a first card and your first card is a joker, it's definitely in my favor. Because the worst case scenario is I give you your money back. The best case scenario is you give me a little bit more money. Now, let's look at the next slide and we'll see why it's a bad idea to play the game. You don't have to understand why this formula is correct. It is correct, but the concept that I want to get across here is playing the game, your net chance of winning is negative three dollars. So every time in the long run, every time you play the game, you'd lose three dollars. Since you paid 30 to get in, and this has a profit of 27, the difference is three dollars. So it costs you three dollars to play. But if you look at it as, well, I'm going to double my money, or the worst case scenario, maybe I get nothing. It's not the whole story. So let's turn over one card and take a look at what it looks like on it. Just one card. Yep. OK, the eight. So this is a good point. Uh, to make this um, statement, you drew an ace, so you're there. And the question is, is the next card an ace or is it a joker? If it's an ace, there's a possibility, you, or you definitely win. If it's a joker, then you don't. If you go back one slide, can you go back? Actually, two slides. So, if it's an ace and an ace that you have, you win 60. It only costs you 30 to play, so you're making money. But if it's an ace and a joker, you get 30, but you paid 30 to get into the game. So there's really no profit, no loss. This brings up the point that a decision is not the same as a result. It's possible 
to play the game, make bad decisions, and have a good outcome. Similarly, if you were to play the lottery, which has minuscule chance of winning, the chance that you win is different than the decision you made to play the game. The decision was bad to play. The result may have been good that you won. Same thing with this. We saw that there's a negative $3 outcome for playing the game. So choosing to play the game it was a bad decision. The result may be that you win, but the decision was still bad. All right, let's go forward to... Okay, now turn over the other card. Joker. So what you did is you got an ace for the first card, a joker for the second card. So there's a one-half times one-third possibility that would happen, but we already knew it was a bad decision to play the game because we saw that you'd owe $3 on average. Now, if you had drawn an ace, and had an ace-ace, the fact that you won does not mean it was a good decision. It was still a bad decision to play, good outcome for you. Are there any questions about the difference between a decision and an outcome? I don't have a question about that. I have a question about why it's costing me $3. Uh, because of my brain injury, I, I, my numbers are completely gone. Okay, let's... So why uh, is it costing me $3 to play? If, if we look at the odds, you have four cards yeah. to start with, okay? We started out here to play the game was 30. Okay, general rule, got to pay 30 to play. Okay? So you have four cards. Is there any reason to believe that the first card you draw has to be a king or a joker or an ace? They have an equal likelihood, right? There are two of each. Okay. So the first card, there's a 50% chance it's an ace and a 50% chance it's a joker. The second card, there are three cards remaining from the original four. If you drew an ace, only one of those three cards could possibly be an ace. If you drew an ace, there's a possibility that two of the cards left out of the four are jokers, okay? So that's represented as a one-third chance of an ace and a two-thirds chance of a joker. Okay. So if you picked an ace and there are only jokers left or two jokers, more jokers, then it starts to imbalance things. And the way that's represented is this formula. You paid out 30, so you start with a negative 30. There's a one six chance that you're gonna make 60 bucks, one third, and one third times one half equals one six. So that's one six chance of a $60 payout. And you do that for each of these options. And you, add them and multiply them, and you come up with negative three, which means on average, average could be two, could be 200, could be 2,000, but it, on average, if you play the game long enough, you will definitely have this negative $3 uh, result, which is the, uh, the value of playing the game. So this part is $27.
So if it only costs you $1 to play and your average result was 27, the average payout, the value of the game would be 26 because it costs you $1 to buy in. That would be a good decision. Yes? You're talking about a bad decision that can end up, the result can end up positive. Correct. So what about a good decision where the result ends up negative? Okay, we're playing the game. He paid $30 to buy into the game, and yet he drew two aces. The bad decision was choosing to play the game because on average, we know that he'd have a loss. And yet, for some inexplicable reason, he drew two aces. So the result was good for him. The decision to play the game was bad. And it happens. It happens all the time. We see it with the lottery. One person wins $400 million. Amazing. It was still a bad decision to play the game because the odds are in the billionths of a percent that you're going to win. It's remarkably smaller that you're going to be the only winner. So bad result or good result, bad decision. Now, if you look at it as just entertainment, uh, you know, a ticket only cost me a dollar or two dollars. And somehow or another, it filters down and benefits education. Okay, that's different than saying, no, I'm going to win. I feel strongly. This is a great decision to put everything I own into this minuscule possibility that I'd actually win. So that's the difference between the decision and the result.